Good morning, and uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I would have happily listened to a, to a long <laughs> summing up, but uh, great, great to be here, and thank you, everyone, for, for coming. Um, there are huge challenges facing governments across the world today, and one of the most important of all is how we meet the growing energy demands in a way that protects the planet for our children uh, and, obviously, all those that, that follow. Now, this needs urgent attention and real global leadership, which is why this group was established, and I'm delighted that London is hosting this, the latest summit, and that everyone has been able to join us today. I think we should be clear, and this is important, that the growing demand for energy across the world is a good thing. It is a sign of people getting wealthier. It's the result of millions in China, India, owning cars, and millions of families in Africa having access to power for the very first time. But with global demand forecast to increase by more than 40% in the next two decades, we urgently need a more diverse, cleaner mix of energy sources that will give us energy security without causing irreparable damage to our planet. Now, of course, nuclear energy, cleaner coal, oil and gas, including, of course, shale gas and carbon capture and storage, they are all going to have an important role to play. But I passionately believe that the rapid growth of renewable energy is also vital to our future. And what unites us here today is not only do we share a principled commitment to renewables, but we as countries have all been prepared to make upfront investments in the infrastructure needed to make wind, solar, bioenergy, viable options for the first time. And uh, whether it's hydroelectric power in Scandinavia, bioenergy in South America, electric vehicles in North America, uh, or onshore wind in China, huge amounts have been achieved, and there is a lot for us to learn from each other, which is why these meetings are so valuable. As a result, renewables are now the fastest growing energy source on the planet, and I'm proud that Britain has played a leading role at the forefront of this green energy revolution. When I became Prime Minister, I said that Britain would aim to have the greenest government ever, and that is exactly what we have. Today, we're one of the best places for green energy, for green electricity, for green investment, and crucially, for green jobs anywhere in the world. We have the world's first payment to business for generating renewable heat, the world's first dedicated green investment bank, we have a pioneering carbon capture and storage program, we have the largest offshore wind market in the world, and in the City of London, we have the world's number one financial center for low carbon industries. We're putting energy efficiency where it should be, at the heart of energy policy, including introducing our flagship Green Deal program, which I'm sure uh, Ed Davey and Greg Barker will be saying uh, more about. We're getting to grips with our electricity market, making the long-term reforms necessary to attract investment into a balanced portfolio of new nuclear, gas, clean coal, and renewable generation. As a result, Britain has gone from almost no capacity for renewables to seeing them provide around 10% of our total electricity needs last year. And we've added more capacity for renewables in the last two years than at any time in the last decade. Now, this deliberate investment in renewable energy isn't just good for our environment. We also believe it is very good business, too. In the last year alone, we've seen announcements of £4.7 billion of investment into UK renewables, supporting 15,000 new jobs, including plans for several new major factories around our coastline to help build the equipment and the infrastructure needed for the next generation of offshore wind and marine energy. And today, just today, six companies are announcing major progress on biomass and wind projects in the UK. This represents hundreds of millions of pounds of investment, more than 1,000 gigawatts of new capacity, and as many as 800 jobs during the peak of construction in the next few years. Now, our commitment and investment in renewable energy has helped to make renewable energy possible. Now we have a different challenge, I believe, and that challenge is to make it financially sustainable. And for that to happen, I think we need to do three things. First, we've got to get the costs down. At a time when higher gas prices are leaving families and businesses struggling with their energy bills, and when we're fighting to get to grips with our debts, we don't just need greener energy, we need cheaper energy too. Today, renewable energy is still relatively expensive, but government and industry are together proving that we can get costs down quickly. Already, solar costs have halved uh, in two years. Onshore wind costs are falling rapidly too, and we are this week stepping up our efforts with industry to bring down the cost of offshore wind. As those costs fall, so it's right that consumers should pay less in subsidies for new projects. But let me be clear, when we've made a commitment to a project, we will always honour it in full, and we will be every bit as focused on giving companies in the supply chain the clarity and certainty they need to continue to invest 
with confidence. But I think we can get these costs down further. I really believe that more mature renewable technologies can be amongst our cheapest energy sources within years rather than decades. That should be good for consumers, good for our economy, but also good for our environment. Our job is to help to bring that about. Second, I think we need to make renewable energy a viable proposition globally. That means developing a proper global carbon price so that different energy sources can compete on a level playing field and ensuring the European Union leads the development of carbon pricing in a way that maintains the competitiveness of industry is a priority for me. But it also means developing the framework for international trade in renewables so it becomes a truly global business. Trade is vital because renewable energy resources are obviously unevenly distributed around the world. For example, Britain has the biggest generating potential for offshore renewables in Europe. We need a way of getting this power to where the demand is. So trading is something Britain is determined to lead. We're driving a European-wide initiative to link our energy grids. And just this week, we've signed new collaboration agreements with Korea and with the United States to exchange research and work together on investments. And we're announcing today a call for evidence on how the UK could increase its trade in renewables. Third and finally, we each need to focus our investment in renewables in the areas where we are best placed to do so. For Britain, obviously, as I've said, one of the biggest opportunities is the North Sea. Since the 1960s, the North Sea oil and gas has given Britain and many of our neighbours a real competitive advantage. This came about because of the ingenuity of the private sector, together with strong, proactive support from government. Today, the same partnership between government and business has the potential to make North Sea, once again, a source of investment and comparative advantage. This remarkable European energy asset has the potential to lead the world in offshore wind and carbon capture and storage with whole new supply chains to deliver the enormous amounts of capital required. So I'm delighted that more than 20 companies are today announcing their commitment to the long-term vision of a second renewable energy revolution in the North Sea. Now, if we can do these three things, get the cost down, make renewable energy a global business, and continue to invest upfront in the crucial infrastructure needed, then I think we really can secure the future of re renewables alongside the other energy sources as a vital part of our energy supply. And with it, we can help to create jobs, growth, and in the words of the United Nations Secretary General, sustainable energy for all. That should be what fires us up, and I hope that you'll come up with very good conclusions from this meeting about the ways in which we can work together to make this vision a reality. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ed.